Welcome to the Alex Ryder New York Comic Con. My name is Anthony Horowitz, and I'm the author of the Alex Ryder books and also an executive producer on the upcoming TV series. I'm so excited for the US launch to begin, and I can't wait for you to see the work that we've done. It's been 20 years now since I wrote the first Alex Ryder novel, Stormbreaker, and since then, it's changed my life. 13 novels, selling more than 20 million copies, and I'm told are 30 different countries. For the TV show, the most important thing was to get Alex Ryder right. Who is Alex Ryder? He's a reluctant spy. He's not a superhero, but he's still a hero. He's a normal kid, and yet at the same time, he's extraordinary. And on that note, what better time to introduce my co-panelist, Alex Ryder himself, Mr. Otto Farrand. Hi, Otto. Thanks, Anthony. It's great to be here at New York Comic Con. Um, and I haven't come empty handed. For all the Alex Ryder fans out there, I have an exclusive clip from season one of Alex Ryder. Um, so check it out. Good evening, Alex. I know you. I know Krav Maga. Well, I know shooting people in the head. Why don't we calm down and have a cup of tea and a chat? Well, this is very embarrassing, isn't it? He sees straight through our cover, traces his uncle's car to the scene of his death with remarkable ingenuity gives one of our agents a broken nose for trying to apprehend him and then follows you all the way across London and finds his way here. I find it very impressive. He's a walking security breach, an emotionally unstable teenager who knows who we are and who assaulted one of our people. And isn't that exactly what we need? An emotionally unstable teenager. Great clip, Otto, good choice. It really shows the character for what he is. Tell me a little bit about the casting process. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I, I was a long process for me. I, I started auditioning in November of 2019. Um, and I think I did my first self tape around then. And I remember I was working at the time and I, 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 I'd read the books when I was younger and I, and I, I loved them. Um, and, I, and I really wanted, obviously wanted to audition. I was really excited, but I, I could not see it. I couldn't see myself getting it. Any, uh, until I got it, I was like, there's no way that this is going to happen. Um, which, yeah, I don't know, it was, it was mad. And then, uh, yeah, I did three or four auditions and it culminated on this final day, um, which was in sort of February of 2019, uh, which you were at. And uh, it was, yeah, it was lots of executives and the writer and the director, and we were all in this room. And there was about 20 other boys um, playing Tom and Alex, or going up for Tom and Alex and um, a few girls going up for Jack. And it was really intense. It was like X Factor at times. It was like, you'd go in and then you'd come out and be, the number had halved. You'd be like, where did everyone go? And everyone was like, yeah, they sent them home. They didn't get the job. And so it's like 20, then 10, then five, then three, then two. And then, yeah, it happened. You probably don't know this, Otto, but actually there were 600 kids who auditioned for the part of Alex Ryder. I mean, Gary Davy, our casting director, went all over the country, not just to drama schools, but to ordinary schools, to drama clubs. People sent in uh, auditions over sort of, you know, on, on the internet. Uh, we looked at so many different people. And I was, you're right, I was actually in the room at the very end of this enormously long pro process. And there were three 
of you left. There was Ronky and there was Brennock and there was you. So Jack and Tom and Alex. And when the three of you read together, every single person in the room knew without saying anything. We just knew we had found the perfect team. Um, so I'd love to know one question. How much of yourself do you think did you actually put into that character? Um, a, a fair amount, yeah, a fair amount. I spoke to Andreas Prochaska, the director of the first four episodes, because um, we did a lot of preparation before starting shooting. And, and he was very, really keen to just, he just said, bring yourself to it as much as possible. Because I think one of the biggest things, and I hope it's okay me saying this, but like one of the biggest things that makes Alex Ryder so incredible um, and so successful is that he's he's relatable. And I think if you bring, at least we tried to bring an authenticity to to that in terms of in terms of me bringing myself to it um, in order for, for that to be to translate to the screen. Um, so yeah, quite quite a lot of it. Tell me about the first day of filming. I'd love to know because you were you were really thrown in at the deep end on this one on the very very first day. Where where was that? Yeah. It was in Romania, um, and they it, they hadn't written the scripts for episodes five to eight. But we knew we had to get the snowboarding scene, the famous snowboarding scene in. Um, and there was a lot of exteriors at point blank. So we had to get those done first because we were filming in March. And so we would have lost the snow. So I was, we were filming without scripts. Um, and I don't think I had a single line for the first three weeks of filming or something. Um, <laughs> but it was lots of, lots of action stuff. It, it was amazing. We were out in the mountains and I was flying on a, in a helicopter around the Romanian mountains. And it, yeah, it was amazing. So good. it was like pinch me. Um, so Anthony, it is my turn to ask some questions. Um, so having written the books for so long, what were some of your favorite moments to watch on screen um, from the TV well, series? You've already mentioned one of them. I mean, anyone who's read the book will know that the, the, the ironing board sequence, if I may call it that, is the most critical, is my favorite part of the whole book. And when I was you know, looking at the scripts, I was saying to everybody, if there's one thing you've got to film, it's that sequence where Alex escapes with the help of an ironing board uh, in the middle of, of this extraordinary mountain mm. scenery. And so that mm. sequence, which is breathtaking, I mean, the photography and, you know, the, just, the, just the sheer scope of it is really cinematic. That was one of my favorite moments. I also adored your fight with Mrs. Stellenbosch. I mean, goodness yeah. knows how you managed to get through it because you look like you're getting beaten up so badly. And also all your stuff, we saw a little bit of you there with our Stephen Delaney, the wonderful actor who plays Alan Blunt. I love those scenes too in the books. And I thought you did them absolutely perfectly on the screen. When you, you, you know, you mentioned you've read the books, Otto. Uh, of course, if you hadn't yeah. read the books, you wouldn't have been cast. You do know that. Um, but um, <laughs> what is it that actually, what is it that drew you to the role? What was it? Was it the action? Was it the, you know, was it the relationship with Jack or with Tom? What, what, you know, what was it for you that really, you know, besides the fact that it was obviously going to be such an exciting shoot, drew you to it? The, the character is so multifaceted. I, I think what was really exciting for me was was that Alex is a sensitive soul, but he's also incredibly determined, and he's incredibly he has a, he has an iron willpower and an iron like, strength strength, um, which I had never trans I'd never performed that before on screen, and like learning to fight and to climb and do all these action sequences, I really found out that there's like a side of myself that I didn't even know about. So it was, it was yeah, it was really, it, that was what was, I think, I, maybe I didn't even know that at the time when I was auditioning, but like, that's definitely something that I found amazing. Um, but but how, can I ask, how did you come up with the idea for Alex Ryder in the first place? Well, Alex Ryder is very unlike James Bond, let me say that straight away, but the inspiration <laughs> for the character did begin with Bond. I mean, when I was much younger than you are now, I was going to see Bond at the cinema, and I just had a very simple thought one day, is Bond getting too old? Or what would he be like if he was a teenager? At that time, Roger Moore was playing, and he was in his late 50s. And so in that moment, teenage spy, ping, a light bulb moment, uh, and I thought, that's what I'm gonna create. But everything about the character, I deliberately made very different from Bond. So for example, he's not patriotic. He doesn't want to be a spy. He just wants to hang out at school and have fun with his friends. Um, so so that, that was really the inspiration for it. Now my turn, let me ask you this. Um, can you share with us any sort of behind the scenes stuff that we, you know, that fans out there might like to know about stuff with you and maybe Brennock or, or you know, just what was getting on on the set or in the time that you had off or, you know, uh, something that we haven't heard. 
Ooh, I mean, there's so much. You're filming for like six months and um, a lot of fun is had in six months when you're with Brenna Coconna and uh, Ronke Adekloeja. So um, yeah, there, there was loads. I, I remember a lot of times, and Brennick Brennick says as much better than I, but like a lot of times in the action sequences, I, uh, I wouldn't say I get carried away, but I'm not, I'm actually surprisingly not that, um, in terms of like choreography, not that hand-eye coordinated. Um, so sometimes a punch would go that little bit too far. Um, and I think I, I think <laughs> How I many people did you knock out? <laughs> I, I, I did hurt a few people. I, I elbowed Brennock in the face. Um, in, in, yeah, I did that in one take. And then also the stunt guy, um, which I felt really awful about. <laughs> um, can I ask you something actually? Um, so what can people who are already familiar with the books, what can they look forward to uh, seeing in the show? Is there anything new that wasn't in the books? You, for a start, first thing. I mean, um, me, and, yeah. and of course, of course you know, let's be honest, you are, a little bit, you are a little bit older than the Alex Ryder of the books. That's the first big change I think we made, which is that Alex in the books is 14 years old, actually, in point blank. And we decided very early on that we, were, we wanted to raise that demographic. So though we don't talk about age very much, it was important to us that he should be a little more grown up. I think with the, the, the action and the um, intensity of this television series is, uh, is greater than in the book even, actually. I think Guy Burt, who wrote the scripts, has done a fantastic job in making a very serious world. I mean, it, it started as a children's book. This is not a children's TV series. It is for the whole family. Uh, and so those are two of the big differences. Also, I must say that Brenner, who plays Tom, has got a much, much bigger part in the TV series, and it's all the better for it, the show that is, because the two of you together are just so watchable and so enjoyable. Uh, I think we more or less ran out of time. Also, thank you so much for joining me at New York Comic Con. Oh, thank you for having me. It's, uh, it's always lovely to speak to you. And thanks all of you for watching at home. We can't wait for you to see the US premiere of Alex Ryder on November the 13th, exclusively on IMDb TV, Amazon's free streaming service. Did you know that is my birthday? November the 13th? No, that's great. Anyway, yeah. thanks everyone. <laughs> Bye. Bye.